Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello and welcome to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline here on Business Talk Radio Live every Friday. I am your host and executive producer, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show is all about inspiration and hope. And my guests share their stories of how they've overcome adversity. With us today, we have a very successful female entrepreneur. She is Teresa Slater, also known as Terry. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Terry is the founder and president of Empire Interpreting Service. And as I mentioned, she is a female entrepreneur. She has multi-level uh, locations, and she also has been a blogger. Uh, she's also won an award from the Small Business Administration as a Small Business Person of the Year, which is incredible. She works out, keeps herself fit. She is uh, a mother and she is going to share her stories with us. So welcome from Philadelphia. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Exciting. It's very exciting. So what you're doing is really incredible. So you have an interpreting service and mm -hmm. if you could explain to our audience, what exactly is interpreting? Okay. It's a great question, actually, because oftentimes the words of interpreting and translation are used um, and interposed and they're really two separate things. So interpreting is uh, actually on site or it can be over the phone, uh, taking a spoken language or a sign language from your uh, source language to a target language. Uh, translation is actually written word. So we might translate a website into another language or a document. Um, mostly what we do are, is on-site interpreting. So the business was actually started as just sign language interpreting. That was my background. And after a few years, we started to add spoken languages. And so now it's about 50-50 uh, spoken languages and sign language. But the primary function of what we do is to provide interpreters on-site in different settings. That's amazing. And you were also certified as a sign language interpreter. Is that correct? I, I am. I freelanced for about 10 years before I started the business. I had a business background and I kind of, um, much like you, Dr. Jacqueline, I took some of my backgrounds together and combined it into a passion. And so um, I really missed the business world when I was out freelance interpreting and I saw a real gap in the industry for professional, more of a higher standard of vetting interpreters and dealing with our business clients and customers. So um, putting those two backgrounds together, I decided to start uh, Empire Interpreting Service. Actually, this week is our 17th year. Well, so we just here you. hit that 17th, thank you. Um, so that's, it, it's actually how it started was my, desire to start something. I don't interpret anymore. I haven't for a long time, although I keep my certification active because I'm just too busy running the business to be out interpreting anymore. Well, you certainly are an inspiration and a, and a role model. I love when we have female entrepreneurs on the program because in this COVID environment, people are making decisions about how they're going to be spending the rest of their time with their career, with their personal life. And so you just shared that you hit your milestone of 17 years in business. And I'm sure during that course of 17 years, you've had to overcome a lot of adversity. I did. I think, I think as, um, as a female, you know, we, we face different different uh, adversity, whether it's being a mother, whether it's being a daughter, 
Um, I, I guess the first thing I would say is that both of my sons were had left home. One was still in college when I started the business. So I didn't have that kind of juggling act that a lot of women have, but I did have parents that were elderly and I did end up at one point having to take care of my mom for a few years while I was right at the very peak of my growth in the business. So that was something that was very difficult to do. Um, I know you're very close to your mom. I'm sure you can understand what that was like to, to I mean, I would work all day and then I would go directly to my mom and I did that for years. Um, that was really tough trying to make that decision. I, early on, I think that the, the biggest stumbling block for me was just trying to get people to accept me as a female in my industry. There were a lot of, there are primarily more female interpreters than there are male, but there weren't really any female business owners and a language service provider at that time, at least not in New York, which is where I started the business. So I wasn't really taken seriously a lot. Um, so that, that was really tough. I think when I finally overcame that was when I had a male uh, a competitor call me. I had just won a very large bid on a contract that he was also, what well, he had had for many years. When he found out I won the contract, he called me and he said, I don't know who you think you are, little girl, but we need to have a talk about what your business plan is and what you think you're going to be doing in my backyard. Oh my God. And that kind of spurred me on. <laughs> <laughs> How did you respond to that? Do you want the honest truth? Yes. Um, I, I had the phone in my hand. It was it was a landline, and I put the phone down, and I went kind of like that on the table. And I said, <laughs> "Excuse me, what did you say?" I, I don't think I heard you clearly. Um, but uh, yeah, it. It, 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 I think just that kind of reaction that I was having and, you know, my dad used to tell me he was an entrepreneur and he said, you know, success is the best way to prove yourself. Um, success can be the best revenge. Success can be what motivates you um, further, even once you hit different milestones. So that's a great story. And so obviously Empire Interpreting Service is distinguished from all the other competitors out there because we have you running the company. So what would you like people to know about you and Empire that differentiates you from everyone else? Um, I think what we're most widely known for is the fact that we vet our interpreters at a much higher level than um, most of our competitors do. When I first started interpreting, I was really shocked at the lack of vetting. I would have people call me and say, would you like to sign up with our agency? Can you send me your rates and your, you know, fill out this 1099? And that was it. I, I wouldn't even meet the people that I was working for. Um, there also was a, a lack of background checks for people. Um, I worked with students in the School for the Deaf at one point that I was interpreting for that had been um, actually victims of a pedophile that had been hired there and found out that that person hadn't had a background check because he was a dorm parent. He wasn't actually a teacher, which got me thinking, I'm here alone with these students too, and no one's done a background check on me. They don't know who I am. So when I started the agency, the credentialing, uh, the college degrees that they have to have, the, you know, the, we do criminal and sex offender background checks. They have to have professional liability insurance. They have to have health screenings, and that, which is incredibly important right now with COVID, of course, because interpreters are in hospitals with patients. So that set us apart. Um, that's what we're still the most proud of is the fact that we've raised the bar in the industry of what a uh, interpreting agency should and can be. And I think the other thing that sets us apart is the staff that actually run the company, not the interpreters, but the ones, my business manager, my CFO, uh, my office manager, and myself. It's a very horizontal company. And what I mean by that is that we all answer the phone, that we all can help a customer. We can all be a support to our interpreters and that we're all trained to do that so that it's not a hierarchy. 
And I think that as a woman, I really like that. I think I function better in that um, arena other than trying to just be, you know, the president and not having that connection. Well, it, you certainly distinguish yourself as far as I'm concerned. It sounds like Empire Interpreting Service is the best in the business. So that's who I would advocate contacting. I'm wondering, Terry, when you think about yourself 17 years ago and today, how have you grown as a business person? Um, I, I, be, I believe that the biggest growth for me came a few years in when I realized that I had outgrown my accountant, my bank, and my insurance agent. It was a strange duo or trio that happened at one point. I felt like I was always, and not that they were entitled, but that somehow I owed them my loyalty because they started with me. So it's kind of like when you go to a hairdresser and you go to a hairdresser and you get to know them and you, you know, and you, you talk about things, you talk about styles or TV shows or your kids or whatever. The hairdresser is just not doing a very good job anymore. But as women, a lot of times we don't want to leave that person because we don't want to hurt their feelings. It feels awkward. When, and as a businesswoman, I found I was in that trap, especially with my accountant, my financial institution. It was 2008, and we all know what happened in 2008 with the economy. And the it was a credit union that I had started with, and they came to me and they said, we're not going to be offering these business services anymore. And I started to panic, and I went to a financial institution, a bigger a bank, bigger bank, who's still with me today, and said, this is who I am, this is what I built. And they're like, of course, we'll offer you a line of credit and we'll offer you these business services. And they bought my CFO in and talked to her and they said, they were like, whatever you want. And I couldn't believe the services that I was getting, but I was stuck with this little credit union and felt that I owed them that. So the next step I said, well, I think it's time I got rid of my accountant and got a bigger accounting firm. And then I went on to my insurance. So I think that, that's how I've changed the most. I've stopped trying to be that little girl that wants to be patted on the head and everybody likes you. And we don't want to make waves. As my dad had said to me when I started the business, you know, don't be a little girl, be a businesswoman. And it took me a few years to learn that lesson. And so I think that that was the biggest transformation for me as a businesswoman. Wow, that is incredible. I hope everybody who's out there who has a small business or you're looking to start a business listens to what you just said because you arrived. You realized that you were making your own decisions. You were not going to hold on to things that weren't serving you and you were going to move forward. And now look at you today. So congratulations. That's really terrific. We have so much more to chat about. But we have to take a break and hear from some of my friends who are our sponsors here at Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. So stay with us. We will be back with Terry Slater. Hey everybody, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show. And I wanna invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws, like gravity. But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There are 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth today. 40% of these people are under the age of 25. Young adults are the most fertile mission field in the world today. In scripture, we see Jesus pouring his life into 12 young adults who he equipped to change the world and all of history. 
Like Jesus, we believe that the best approach to reach the world with the gospel is to invest in young emerging leaders and equip them to build disciple-making movements. Concentric is the notion of surrounding and sharing a common center. Our center is the model and strategy of Jesus for both leadership development and ministry formation. As a global alliance, we provide equipping in biblical leadership based on Jesus' example in the New Testament. Jesus modeled for us how to make disciples that reproduce. Focusing on leadership development is key to creating movements that spread the gospel and Jesus' disciple-making strategy to young leaders around the globe. Our Ministry Alliance partners are actively equipping leaders and building movements of multiplication that reproduce the life of Christ. Join us today to equip young leaders with Jesus' strategy that will change cities and nations. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAP partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. Academy Sedan and Limo is a full-service transportation company serving the Philadelphia metropolitan area with full knowledge of the New York City, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. areas. We pride ourselves on being the most dependable, conscientious company in the industry. Our always-on-time service and dependable pricing make us the company to call for any event or occasion. Our vehicles can accommodate any size party for any occasion. Our vehicles range from four-door sedans to SUVs to minivans to limo buses to full-size tour buses and can accommodate groups of two to 100. We offer airport shuttle service or over-the-road service without limitation regarding mileage or time and no drive is too long or too far. So if you find yourself in need of transportation of any type with any vehicle, give us a call at 610-842-4564 and let us show you what a real transportation company can do for you. Use code ACADEMY2020 to receive 20% off your first three rides, including parking and tolls. Make a bold statement by wearing a custom jewelry design from Margie Cedrone Artisan Jeweler, located at 121 Haddon Avenue in Westmont, New Jersey. Telephone number 215-384-7155. Margie Cedrone is an artisan jeweler who has been a permanent fixture on the renowned Jewelers Row in Center City, Philadelphia since 1988. Starting her business in 1982, all of Margie's designs are individually handmade as well as custom design. She is one of the only jewelers left in the area who still crafts the finest tailor-made diamond jewelry, whether it's a statement piece or an everyday item. In addition to her one-of-a-kind designs, she specializes in pearl stringing and bead jewelry repairs. Margie Cedrone Jewelry pairs nearly 30 years of experience with the building of lifelong client relationships. Dr. Jacqueline has been a client and friend of Margie Cedrone for many, many years. Each week during my show, Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, live on Business Talk Radio, I will be featuring one of the beautiful pieces of jewelry that Margie custom made for me. I urge you to contact Margie through her website, MargieCedroneJewelry.com. Wait no longer to make your own bold statement. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio. 
radio show on the planet even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, live at 5 every Friday here on Business Talk Radio. Our show is all about hope, inspiration, and my guests share stories of how they've overcome adversity. Welcome back to the program, Terry Slater. She is the founder and president of Empire Interpreting Service. She is also a certified sign language interpreter. She's a blogger and she has been awarded by the Small Business Administration the fabulous award of being Small Business Person of the Year. So welcome back, Terry. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. So let's get right into it about being picked as the Small Business Person of the Year. What was involved with that? You know, I, I can't tell you a lot about it because I didn't nominate myself. Um, there was uh, the city that my business was founded in upstate New York, in Syracuse, New York. And there's a center there called the Y Center. And um, I can't remember exactly what the acronym is, but they support women entrepreneurs that want to start a business. And one of the women there nominated me for the um, award. And then you have to go through a process of interviews and they have to, you know, they go for your financials and talk to your customers. And so it was a long process of to go through until they finally pick someone. So it was, it was a few years ago, but um, it's probably one of the things I'm most proud of. It was very exciting. Well, I'm very proud for you. That is outstanding. It always feels good to be acknowledged for being the best at what we do. And although you had mentioned before that we don't want to be waiting around to have our head padded or necessarily get a gold star when our work is really recognized and, and our efforts are recognized, that does feel good. So congratulations again to you on that. Thank you. So when you look back over your life, your personal and your business life, and you look at adversity and how you've overcome it, can you share some of what makes you resilient and strong and just continuing to move forward? Um, sure. I think related to my business, I actually started my, I actually got in the field of interpreting because of adversity. Um, and I was in my mid thirties, I was diagnosed with cancer and I had to take a year off from work. I worked in business management in the car business and I had to take a year off from work for treatments. And it, somewhere along that line of being diagnosed, it occurred to me and I panicked that I didn't have a college degree and I was, did not want to leave my two young sons if I didn't make it through um, with a mother who didn't have a college degree. So it became very important to me all of a sudden to have this degree. And so I I'd had some college, but I'd never finished. So I decided that linguistics was something that always fascinated me. I had been taking a sign language class with my sister-in-law in our church. And so I looked into getting a degree and I fast tracked it because I was being very dramatic at the time and thought, oh my God, I better hurry up and get this college degree because I can't die before I get the degree. So I, st I was taking classes nonstop and still raising my kids. And I got my bachelor's degree um, first in 18 months. So I really fast tracked that so I could make sure that I didn't die before I got that degree. But I started in that field and I really loved it. And so I put my business management life behind me in the car business and I started um, freelancing as an interpreter. And then I went to, um, went to graduate school at Gallaudet um, uh, for a couple of summers, but um, it, it was interesting that that's how it started. And that was many, many years ago. So I didn't die. My kids now have more degrees than I do. Um, <laughs> it's, 
but that's that's how I started it. So it pushed me through. I mean, it really got me through. And my kids have always been my inspiration. Um, I think moving forward, I get a lot of inspiration from both of them. One who's an ultra marathoner, I don't know how he does that, and the other one who um, lives with psoriasis and uh, arthritis. And I know that you're familiar, very familiar with that. And he's my hero. I mean, I see what he pushes through every day, and it's really you need that kind of inspiration, I think. Wow, thank you for that transparency and in sharing your story. I just wanna make sure I understood you correctly. You're diagnosed with cancer, which has to be probably one of the worst things that could ever happen to someone. And in the midst of all this, you're working, you're getting treatments and you say to yourself, I'm going to get a college degree. So you get the college degree in record time. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you're worried about your children and now you're cancer free. Thank God. Your kids are incredibly successful. There's so many different life stories that are in there. So for anybody who's watching during COVID, right. Or anybody listening on business talk radio, here's someone who just shared at the worst time of her life, she went and did something that people couldn't even think of doing maybe if they don't have a cancer diagnosis and yet you did it and 17 years your business is successful you're named small business person of the year i mean that's amazing of what you've accomplished i mean that's really tremendous oh thank you i think you know and you and i talked about this it's, as a woman it's so often it's just survival and you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you've got to feed your children and you've got to pay the bills. Um, you, you just do what you have to do. I don't think it's that heroic. I think it's it's surviving and it's just, just moving forward. You know, you can't keep looking in the rear view mirror. Um, you know, COVID has certainly rocked my world like everyone else. I think the one lesson that cancer survivors and anyone who's overcome this kind of adversity know is it's not forever. It's, it's not forever. You just have to keep looking past the end of this. And that's what gets you through. And I knew the cancer wasn't going to be forever. It was going to end one way or another, but it wasn't going to end without me having a college degree. <laughs> well, that is a major accomplishment. And you make a really good point. I think sometimes I'm very guilty of this too we look at the whole picture and if we look at the whole picture and it's like oh my gosh how am i going to get through this how am i going to do that how am i going to excel at this it is overwhelming and daunting but if we put it into different boxes or compartments then we can just focus on the task at hand and it sounds like you have been exceptional in your life in doing that i think it was a role modeling of you know my mother my grandmother the women in my life you you had to be strong and you just push through. And I love to surround myself with, with women like that now um, through different organizations and through friendships and you know, looking to them to kind of emulate what they do. It, it's really helpful. You can't, you can't do it by yourself, that's for sure. That's for sure, a good support system is important. I have one final question for you and I think this will be helpful mm -hmm. for people listening and watching. At those times in your life, when fear starts to creep in or self-doubt, how do you keep yourself on point so that you're not consumed by negative energy? Wow, that's a multifaceted <laughs> question. Um, how do I keep myself consumed? I think two things, nothing lasts forever. And knowing that I didn't come this far to only come this far. So I look back to things like, I, if I'm at the gym and I'm doing, you know, uh, kettlebell lifts and my trainer is saying, you know, you can do anything for 10 seconds. It's true, you can. Um, I think back on the, you know, the treatments for cancer, chemotherapy, radiation, <clears throat> it can be really scary, but you learn quickly that it's not gonna be forever. And on the other side of that are going to be results. And on the other side of that, things are gonna get 
better, but I do have plastered all over my condo. I will say this, I'm looking at it now on my screensaver. I did not come this far to only come this far. And that's, that's what keeps me going. It's a very powerful statement. So uh, you have so much to offer. How can people get in touch with you? Um, my website is probably everyone's favorite way. And there's um, on the staff page, there's my contact information. It's empireinterpreting.com. And um, they can find all of my contact information there. Uh, there's several different ways through different portals and certainly my email is on there which is just t slater at empireinterpreting.com and i'm always happy to talk to people about business about interpreting um, or just answer any questions they might have i love to talk about business so i'm always here and always love to help new entrepreneurs as well that's so gracious of you. And I think you have so much knowledge and so much experience. I hope that people do reach out to you because especially, and I'm not just saying focusing on women, but women in business have a different journey than men in business per se. And so you have already climbed the mountain and you've, you're already at the other side. So if anybody wants to reach out to you, you did give your contact information and I hope that they will, because I know that I will be reaching out to you. So. <laughs> That's great. It has really been a pleasure having you on the, the show, Terry Slater. And uh, here's your contact information. Again, empireinterpreting.com or tslater at empireinterpreting.com. So, Terry, we're at the end of our program. I really am very proud of you and all that you've accomplished. And I know that you're going to keep going. And I look forward to seeing what's next for you. And we will be closing out our show today. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline is officially a wrap. We'll see you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Make a bold statement by wearing a custom jewelry design from Margie Cedrone Artisan Jeweler, located at 121 Haddon Avenue in Westmont, New Jersey. Telephone number 215-384-7155. Margie Cedrone is an artisan jeweler who has been a permanent fixture on the renowned Jewelers Row in Center City, Philadelphia since 1988. Starting her business in 1982, all of Margie's designs are individually handmade as well as custom design. She is one of the only jewelers left in the area who still crafts the finest tailor-made diamond jewelry, whether it's a statement piece or an everyday item. In addition to her one-of-a-kind designs, she specializes in pearl stringing and bead jewelry repairs. Margie Cedrone Jewelry pairs nearly 30 years of experience with the building of lifelong client relationships. Dr. Jacqueline has been a client and friend of Margie Cedrone for many, many years. Each week during my show, Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, live on Business Talk Radio, I will be featuring one of the beautiful pieces of jewelry that Margie custom made for me. I urge you to contact Margie through her website, MargieCedroneJewelry.com. Wait no longer to make your own bold statement.